Good morning, children. Today we are starting the poem Tiger. We have done this poem beforehand, but still I would like to recite the poem for you once so that you understand the poem properly. And after that, I am going to help you all with the inner meaning of the we have to know the inner meaning of the poem in order to recite the poem very properly. So, here is the recitation in my voice. I want you all to recite the poem and then send it to me in Google Class. Okay, please listen to me. The Tiger, written by William Blake. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night. What immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? In what distant deeps or skies burned the fire of thy eyes? On what wings dare he aspire? What the hands dare switch the fire? And what shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of thy heart? And when thy heart began to beat, what dread hand, what dread feet? And the hammer, what the chain? In what furnace was thy brain? What the anvil, what dread grasp? Dare it steadily terror's clasp? When the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears, did he smile his walk to see? Did he who made the lamb make thee? Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night. What immortal hand or eye dare frame thy fearful symmetry? Written by William Blake. So here's the recitation poem. Now I'm going to just show you all what is the inner meaning of the poem. Just see, stanza one. In the first stanza, the poet says that the tiger is burning bright in the forests of the night. The line means that the tiger which is in the forest is burning like fire or in other words looking like yellow fire in the dead of night. The burning bright also reflects the tiger's bright yellow color and makes it look fierce. In the third line, the poet raises a rhetorical question which is the immortal hand or eye, which is capable of framing or building its fearful symmetry. The poet in a way, in stanza two, what does he say? In the second stanza, the poet talks about the eyes of the tiger. He wonders from which distant he means infinite places. The fire has been brought and put into the eyes of the tiger. The fire has been brought either from skies, that is either from sun or heaven, or from deep oceans, means either core of the earth or hell, because it cannot be an ordinary fire of the world, but a divine one. Now stanza three. In the third stanza, the poet talks about the hearts of the tiger. He wonders 
what kind of shoulders an art the creator would have which twist gives shape the muscles or ligaments of tiger's heart here the poet is praising the power and amazing art of god which helped him creating tiger's heart now comes stanza 4 In the fourth stanza, the poet praises the brain of the tiger. He wonders which hammer, chain, anvil, and furnace the creator would have used to create the brain of the tiger. These tools are used by the iron smith to create solid and heavy items. So, what do we find? The brain of the tiger. for the poet is no less than iron hence he thinks about the divine tools used to create the brain of such a deadly animal now comes stanza 5 in this stanza the poet tends to compare this deadly animal to the lamb which is meek innocent and quite opposite to the former in addition there is also a reference to a biblical incidence as mentioned in paradise lost by john milton you all have not gone through paradise lost my children so when you all go through the book you will understand that there is a similarity between the thinking of the poet when he writes the tiger and he finds a similarity between the tiger and paradise lost by john now coming down the poet says that when god created the tiger the stars here means satan and his followers which were in war with him were so frightened by its sight that is the tiger's sight that they accepted their defeat and threw down their weapons now the final stanza that is stanza 6 the final stanza is a repetition of the first one the only what word changing here is dare instead of could which is quite significant in the first stanza the poet seems to be less amazed by the powers of the tiger and god but after going through all the features of the tiger he wonders it is only god who can dare to create such an animal so this wonderful creation of the poet william blake i hope you all understood very well we will be doing some questions from this chapter in order to understand the chapter better we don't need to write down the answers only go through the answers properly so that you feel the reason why william blake has written such a wonderful write up for us okay children thank you.